Just tell them what to do. They know how to get it done. Have you seen such a person? They have skill in building, in craftsmanship. You know, they can turn. Just give them a tree. They will cover human being from that tree. Have you seen a wooden sculpture before, right? Yeah, that's key. And that's the strength of that person. Tell him what you want. He's going to bring it to your death step. Why some other person, their strength might just be influence. Some people are very influential that, you know, they command a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of people, a lot of activities around them. Why? Because to them, they are strong. Praise God. So when they see that they have influence, they tell themselves that I'm a strong man. Just like the man that is like this will say, I'm a strong man. Just like the man that has key will say, I'm a strong man. That's why you cannot even tell somebody your BVN number. If you give him your BVN number, he will assess your account. That's also key. It might be negative. You might use it negatively, but it's also key. Praise God. There are some people, once they have a better job, to them they are strong. And you dare not talk to me because I know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, to that person is strength. Praise God. Amen. There's one level of strength that is hardly talked about, and that is the strength of age. You know, age is strength. Yeah. When you are the older you are, the stronger your strength is on that level. Now, permit me to say that if I go out with an 80 years old man, you know race safety will not treat me the way they will treat that man. Yeah, they won't. They may just tell me, you see, where they tell me sit down, they will look at the man and just, okay, just go. Praise God. Because age is strength. Why is it strength? Because it is expected that at that level, so many, you have gone through so many things, you have seen so many things, you have known many things, and your experience. Leadership. You know, when people assume the position of leadership, to them, they also see themselves as strong men. Is it not so? Yeah. They see themselves as strong men, and they see themselves as everywhere, and they talk the way they like. Many things, I'm just going to mention a few and go into it. Just permit me for us to learn this thing together today. Oratory is another strength. Some people, when they hold microphone, you can you just be clapping, even when you don't know why you are clapping. Praise God. That's why some people eat with microphone. Abi, basket mouth, eat with microphone. Ali Baba, eat with microphone. Two of us, good. So to them, it's also their strengths. Their family backgrounds are under strength. There are some people, when they just look at their family, they just say, it's coming, nothing, no shaking. Hello. They just tell themselves, no shaking. And so, if not well utilized, you see them misbehaving in town. True or false? True. And true, when you actually get them arrested for one offense or the other, they will remind you that I told you I won't stay here. Why? To them, they have strengths. Education is another thing. You know, you might just be a professor now. And when we talk, you just shift your glass and look, what has this one? How many books have this one read? Praise God. So to the prof, he's also, that is his strength. So suffice me to say that, as I said earlier, that when we talk about strength, when God says, when we are talking about divine healing and strength, we are trying to tell you that, look, we know that you have ability. But beyond that, we should have, God is about to do or go a step further in your life. That's the essence of this study today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When I wrote here, I said, there's an, don't worry, we'll read the scripture. I said, there's an irony to all these things. I said, not many physically strong people are also emotionally strong. That's the irony of life. Hello. Some people are very strong, but emotionally, they are weak. So, when the strength of God comes into that person, he stabilizes his emotion. That's where the strength of God comes in. Hello? Yeah, God will not stabilize the emotion of that person. When Jesus wanted to behave like a man, 
where, let me just ask this question. Thank God my zona coordinator is here. Jesus, in John chapter 11, knew that he could raise up Lazarus from the dead. True of us. But he wept. Why? So, I'm not asking the question. I'm just talking generally. Yeah, he wept. You know, when they met him, Mary crying, Martha crying, did you understand me? And when he saw their emotions, tears rolled off his eyes. So that's to say that every strong man, <laughs> praise God, no matter, their home is not administered. Then you don't begin to wonder. This man is known to be a leader. You understand? Of the entire city, of entire community, of an entire state, but he has like five people in his house. He himself, maybe three or five children. And yet, they cannot keep themselves together. Why? Because the one that has this does not have this. Amen. You see, in First Samuel chapter 29, God was talking to Eli. He said, Wherefore keep ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honest thou the son above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Why? You overpaid your children. You, over, you want to regard them even above me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So you could shout outside, but when it gets to the house, you cannot shout to keep your family in order. I pray that as many that you are listening to us tonight, is there anyone whose home is not kept together? Is there anyone whose hope, whose home or children are not representing what you proclaim? May God Almighty enter into your home today and give you the kind of healing that, that your home deserves in the name of Jesus Christ. I say in the name of Jesus Christ. I also say here, the, we are talking about irony. I also say not everybody that has a good job also have the wisdom to manage their resources. You may have good job, may have good inflow, but you may also lack how to manage your resources. That's why you see some people, when they are out of position for like two years, they are broke. Have you seen such a person before? Yeah. If you have not seen, you have heard. Why? He had a good job. He had several opportunities, but he lacked what? Ability, wisdom, and other strengths to manage resources. But I know we don't have such people in this church, but if we do, when we talk about the prodigal and his money, all those things will come to play. Praise God. So that you will understand fully that you need strength. Why are we saying this? That you have money does not mean you don't need the strength of God. That you have good job does not mean that you don't need the strength of God. If you have money, you know, the Bible has said it is God that gives you power to make words, right? It is also God that gives you the wisdom to administer the resources that he gives to you. It is God that works in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. I said amen. amen. So if you look at what the prodigal did, the man we call prodigal, I don't know, that name just came in anyhow. The prodigal son, that's what they said, right? The story of the prodigal son, I'm not relating this story because we all know. You discover that he had good background. He had good family background. Not every family, not every son can tell his father, give me my share because they might not even have anything to give to them. Apart from the trouser that the man wore. Maybe at the end of the day, your trouser was also better than the old man's trouser, so you're not going to collect it. So, but the man had good background and he had a lot of money. But unfortunately, he couldn't utilize his money. And Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19 will tell us this, that every man also to whom God has given riches and wealth and had given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. Let's read it together. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. To every man, also to whom God had given riches and wealth, and had given him power to eat thereof, and to make and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this 
is the gift of God. What are we saying to this today? Sometimes God has done you well that you are jumping from Jamaica to Italy to U.S. It's not because you are the strongest. It's not because you are the smartest. It is that God has given you strength to do this. So when you do those things, acknowledge your source. Acknowledge your source. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, when people uh, who may be there, there's tendency for them to think that those here are not smart enough. Do you understand me? You all say they are not smart, you know. I, I know what healing, but there's strength to go the extra mile. Praise the Lord. So just say, let me, just let me take time to talk about, you know, what physical strength, you know, does. But God made us to understand that beyond this physical strength, there is what I call divine strength. And that is where God comes in to this matter. Praise God. No, sometimes I tell people, maybe if opportune one of these days, when you talk about, you know, when you talk about helper, people say, uh, how do they pray that prayer? May God send me my helper. Uh -huh, you know. You know, and whenever people talk about helper, they look at human being. Is it not so? Yeah, but there are some there are some helpers that are not that are not physical that God sends across your way. Just digressing for one minute. And such helper that God gives to man is good health. Do you understand me? Yeah. If you don't have good health, if you like have 10 golden opportunity, you cannot actualize it. True or false? True. So, God in everything, there is divine strength that God has given unto us. Part of the divine strength that God gives to us is even our health. May your health not fail you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, when we look at divine strength, we're looking at it times like this, when sometimes you just sit down you cannot predict what tomorrow. Even not, there's never a time anybody predicts tomorrow. But what I'm saying is that in a situation like us today, where we find ourselves, you don't, the uncertainties are more than the certainty. You don't even know what happens next. In a place, in a place where there's, there seems to be confusion everywhere, in a place where there seems to be hunger, in a place where there seems to be depression, in a place where there seems to be anger, people are just angry unnecessarily. I pray you don't make an attempt to quarrel on the street because they will fight you because everybody is angry. Just avoid people. That's the way it is now. Avoid what? Avoid people. I'm not saying run away from people. Just avoid anything that will bring quarrel because when people veg their anger on you, you might not be able to contain it. So, in difficult times like this, we need God. And that's where the strength of God comes in. That, Hosea said, 4 6, that it is not by power, it is not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So, which means that it is not your mozo, it is not your background, it is not your job, it is not whatever, but that the God that you serve, that is behind you, is the source of your strength. Amen. Can we turn to the Bible first of all? Let's look at First Kings together, chapter 19. I'll read from verse 4. Bible says, But he himself, we're talking about Elijah, have confronted, have heard a message from Jezebel, have done all the exploits, and heard message from Jezebel which you started hearing from when you were in primary school. He said, but he himself, he went with his disciples, servants to a place, and left them at a safe place, or in a safe place. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. And he came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. In fact, I'm not even better than my fathers. I'm not better. Those, those my ancestors, am I better than them? You know, Moses, at least Moses died. 
uh, David died. So, why am I alive? Do you understand me? See, I'm not better than my fathers. So, and they lay, and he lay and slept on the eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mountain of God. Praise God. Hello. So, what have you just deduced from this place? That in your frustration, God is present. You know, like to Elijah, everything should just come to an end. Everything should just, everything should just capsize. You know, I heard of somebody, he said, he told me clearly that, do you know that whenever I cross from Karabato or on, I usually pray that the, the, what's it called, the boat should just capsize so that he will just end his life. And I said, did you consider other people that are also with you on that boat? He said, because life was frustrating. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He, he felt that what could be the solution is for his life to be taken. That was actually what Elijah was facing here. He had looked around and said, look, there's no need hiding in caves when I've left my house. What is all this? Because of one woman threatening my life. So, but God said, look, you have not even started your journey. Amen. So, that there is frustration today, that there is hard economy today, I tell you, you have not even started the journey because what God has prepared for you is still great. But one good thing that God does is that he, he tells you, or he may tell you what he wants to do in your life, but he's not going to tell you what you will go through to get what he wants done. And so, that is where the strength, the resilience to hold on to God comes in. When God told Moses that, look, gather these people, let me take them to the promised land, he didn't tell them that they were going to come across Red Sea. True or false? True. He didn't tell them and they went. When God called Abraham, said, let, come, leave your father's house. Let me tell you, where, let me take you to a place. He also did not tell Abraham that Abimelech was on the way. So that you are passing through one scene or the other now does not mean that God has closed your chapter. The strength to hold on, God will give you in the name of Jesus Christ. So when Elijah thought it was over, God said, just eat. And today, God is still feeding people with the food. The food this day might not be physical food. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 6, verse 35, said, and he said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hungry. He that cometh to me shall never hungry. And he that believeth on me shall never taste. So what does that mean? That look, when the more you come closer to God, the word of God is a food unto your soul today. Amen. That is why it is very wrong and it is out of place or it's an anomaly for a Christian to commit suicide. Anyone that does means that he does not have the spirit of God in him. Because once you have the spirit of God, he's going to tell you to hold on a little. And that is the strength that we are talking about today. Amen. So, how do we really get this strength from God that will keep us? What God did for you yesterday, that should be enough courage that God will do a better one for you tomorrow. Amen. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in God. For he had clothed me with the garment of salvation. He had covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decked himself with unmet, and as a bride I donate herself with joy. That is the way God has dealt with me. So when we remember what God has done for us, salvation alone, which is the greatest gift to man, is enough to always give God praise for. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I know that many people will just say, ah, pastor, no understand. Carry your own, me, preach me, you go. I also understand because we live in a world together. We go to the same market together. 
we enter the same bus or buses together or taxi together. But I want to tell you is this. Why you shouldn't complain? Because even the person you are complaining to has his own. So, if the person, or oh, let me not go. Sometimes, if the person you want to complain to cannot help you, what is the essence of your complaint? It doesn't make sense. So, the, you don't need another strength. You don't need Holy Spirit to come and open the cloud again. The there is a strength in you that is enough for you. So, as God has endowed everybody with physical strength, he has also endowed every child of his with spiritual and divine strength. Just tap in the strength of God and life will be more beautiful in the name of Jesus Christ. Have you considered how you pay your fees? Maybe your salary is 30000 and your expenses is 60000 and yet you are not owing. Have you considered that thing before? You are just, maybe your income is 20000 your expenses, if you take what you have spent for this month, today is 14th, right? If you take what you have spent this month, you will be going to imagine where it came from. So if you lean on that same God, you will be a healthy man in his presence and nothing will trouble your life. So God is here to strengthen us in the name of Jesus Christ. So the first one I say, the sort of the job, the Lord just rejoice in this. Lord, rejoice in the Lord, and your strength will come. And two, the spirit of the Lord. When you have the spirit of the Lord, Acts chapter one verse eight, he, God promised and said, "But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you." And that's why you see that Peter on the day of Pentecost, before the Pentecost, is different from the Peter after Pentecost. If what troubles you as a non-believer. Is still troubling you as a believer, then you need to reconcile with God. Praise God. If, but if, if, if depression, you were not a Christian, you were not born again, you could be depressed, things troubled you as if tomorrow, there's no tomorrow, and yet you give your life to Christ. And that same thing is still troubling you today. I pray that God will remove that burden from you by the Spirit of the living God in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's embrace the Spirit of the living God and the name of Jesus is two for us. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. God gave him a name that's above every name. And that is a license to every child of God. The name of Jesus. Nahum chapter 2 verse 7 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it. And they are saved. So that name that is given to us is not just against sin. It is to strengthen you. That whenever you look back, just know that you have a backbone, and that backbone is the name of Jesus Christ. Peter said in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, he said, silver I don't have, which may be the strength of another man. Gold I don't have, which may be the strength of another man. Say, but one thing I have is the name of Jesus. That in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So, speak to your situation. Don't cry over your situation. Because cry has never helped anybody. If I cry doesn't even make you think right. Praise God. When you over weep, you don't think right. So, clean your eyes. Know that you are not the only one in that situation. And God is going to, to help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Enjoy the mercy of God. As a born again Christian, you enjoy the mercy of God. You know, that you are a Christian is not by your works. Ephesians 2 8, right? At least nobody should boast of it. So, the favor that selected you from the multitude to be a child of God, that mercy is enough to keep you as a child of God. So, live in the mercy of God, which is your strength. Let those who don't know God know that you have mercy. Talk authoritatively as one who knows that he has mercy. Amen. If they say there's war in Lagos, just tell them that, ah, there's war in Lagos, me, I won't die. That's mercy. Mercy will say no to what they are saying. So if they say this, just tell them that, look, my case 
is different. Why? Because I enjoy the mercy of God. I may not have physical strength, but I have the mercy of God. They will come near my dwelling. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. Then let us not forget that the word of God is key unto us. As I said, I find it, I, what I've discovered this period is that, permit me to use this word, sir. It's an era where the youth hardly carry the Bible and read. It's difficult for you to just come into a house and see a young man carrying Bible and studying the word of God. The reason, I don't know. Why, I don't know. But it is a tool of destruction from the devil to keep you away from the word of God. Praise the Lord. So, if you can spend time doing other things, your strength, your source of strength is the word of God that you have in the inside of you. Pastor said one day that the Bible is not the word of God. What does that mean? If you say you are afraid of witch and wizard, you not carry the Bible under your pillow, they will beat you mercilessly. Eh? Then you will not begin to look at it. Because the Bible is not an idol. Do you understand it? It is the word of God that you have. That is your word. And so your strength is Amen. So I pray today that this month that has been declared the month of, you know, healing and strength. May the Lord God strengthen you on every side in the name of Jesus Christ. May he give you beauty for arches in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May, be, may he humble your enemy and exhort you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those things that you've cried over, that you have wept over, may God tell you himself that he's your God. May God lift you up. May God give you food. May God give you drink, water to drink. In the may you not faint on the day of adversity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May God Almighty, may you be an evidence of what God can do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands together for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords as he take us through this month of strength in the name of Jesus Christ. And because we are strengthened of God, we also say thank you to God Almighty tonight as we reach to our wallet to say, Father, thank you for it's always a, whenever we come to the presence of God, it's always a privilege to be counted among those that give in church. Is an obligation, is an act of worship. So let's put our hands in our pocket or your paws and let's pray. If you are joining us online, if this is your first time, the account will be displayed on the screen. But if you're doing it before, please just do your transfer. Lord, thank you, God, for another opportunity to give in your house. Lord, we give, oh God, because we know you are our strength. We know your word will do us good. We know that your mercy will strengthen us. We know that your joy will continually strengthen us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We know that your spirit, oh God, will not leave us halfway. Your spirit will always lead us to tell us what to do at every given point in time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for accepting this offering. Let it ascend unto your throne like a sweet smelling sorrow. All to thy praise and glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, let's give our offering. We'll meet here on Sunday, 8 a.m. And men will be meeting after service on Sunday to discuss crucial issues. So please remind those who are not here and those watching us online, please endeavor to be in church on Sunday. Come with your family. Sunday promises to be great in the name of Jesus Christ. So in one minute, I want us to sing a 
a belated happy birthday to our Zona coordinator. For those who didn't have opportunity to sing happy birthday to him yesterday. Uh, choir, just join me so that I will not spoil your key. All right. Shall we rise to our feet as we do a happy birthday to... That's my name. I think Eda Pedro. Please come and bless our pastor. Amen. Why are you calling me an old man before I get there? I'm not too sure whether it's a compliment now. <laughs> Eternal Father, we give to you our thanks. Why do we thank you? We thank you for the blessing of life. We thank you for the years with which you have blessed your children. We thank you that we can celebrate with our daddy in the Lord, our pastor, our zonal coordinator, for another birthday.